Hey everybody, movie reviewer next door here, and I'm back with another review. Finally done with the Birdemic series, even though I did it in one day. Um, felt like I was going to lose my sanity watching the second and third one, but um, back doing normal movies, and I just saw Blacklight. This is a 2022 action thriller conspiracy film directed by Mark Williams, and it stars... Liam Neeson, Emmy Raver Lampman, Taylor John Smith, Aidan Quinn, and Claire Vanderboom. In this film, Travis Block is a shadowy government operative who specializes in removing or er, shadowy government agent who specializes in removing operatives whose covers have been exposed. He then has to discuss, uncover a deadly conspiracy within his own ranks that reaches the highest of echelons of power. So, what did I think of Blacklight? I'm going to be honest. I love Liam Neeson. I think he is a great dramatic actor, and I really like him in a lot of his action films. You have um, Taken, of course. I think is a decent enough movie. I'll have to watch it again. I was thinking of going through that series sometime. Um, you have freaking what was the one called? Nonstop, pretty good thriller. Uh, you have the, the commuter, some wonky CG in the second half, but a, still a very fast-paced and fun thriller. Um, you have. My personal favorite so far, which is... What's it called? Just a second. I've got to look it up. Uh, uh, unknown. That's my personal favorite of his action films. Ice Road. It, I, it wasn't that good. The CG really killed it for me. Honest Thief, I do like... But yeah, I do really like him as an actor and as an action star. Here, this film was a disappointment. Um, especially given the director and that he's a pretty competent director. This director also did um, another Liam Neeson movie, Honest Thief, which I just said i don't know why i said it as if it was a surprise honest thief was a fun uh thriller maybe not super actiony but it was a fun thriller did what it was supposed to and everything this one gets so gets a little bit bogged down in the first half by a weird political angle um there's a lot of just it really does squander its premise in many ways and it squanders a lot of points where you could have had the character be developed a bit better but yeah it was okay I guess from production values and acting alone but let me get to the to the cast Liam Neeson plays Travis Block again already said what he is he's decent here I guess um he doesn't have a lot of scenes where he gets to show emotion. In a lot of his other movies, he has plenty of scenes. Here, he's kind of on autopilot, in a way. Uh, Emmy Raver Lampman plays Mira Jones. She's a reporter. She's trying to expose this conspiracy about the FBI. Um, she was in a show on Netflix called Umbrella Academy. I didn't get past season one because the start of season two had a really forced racial thing and I was like okay if this continues throughout the entire fucking season I can't watch this because it was it is from the series premiere of the or the premiere of the second season of Umbrella Academy season two um it was very obvious that they chose a specific time in Texas so that they could have a race allegory and she was in the middle of that because she's the black one in the group you have to give her a racial thing which to be honest, that seems kind of offensive. Having it so the black character can't do anything other than be in a group about racial equality. Really? Isn't that a stereotype? 
But yeah, here she doesn't do any of that. She acts like a normal fucking human being. Um, I liked her in here. She has some bits where her acting doesn't exactly work. Sometimes where she's a little bit stiff. Um, but for the most part, she works. She looks like a reporter. Taylor John Smith plays Dusty Crane. He's an F, a, an operative who's supposed to be brought in because apparently he was trying to go to... He was trying to speak to somebody about what's been happening in the FBI. Shock of all shocks, there's a conspiracy. Feels like in a lot of these FBI movies, there's a conspiracy or movies about CIA, FBI, any of these three-letter agencies. I like Taylor John Smith in this. I think he's the best performance of the film because it, it he legitimately feels into this character. I like the mystery surrounding what is going on with him. Like, is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? And I like that being turned on your head thing by a movie. And I wish they had played a bit more with that, especially with Travis Block's character or Travis Block as a character for Liam Neeson. Um, Taylor John Smith was also in Where the Crawdads Sing, which I really enjoyed that movie. I thought it was a really well done romance, drama, thriller, courtroom film. It's a lot of things. But it's, for once, a really interesting like movie that's kind of... I think the book is based. it's based on is geared towards teenagers, I think. But it didn't feel like a teen movie. It felt like a legitimate, like, thriller. But yeah, he did a good job. And Aiden Quinn is Gabriel Robinson, who's basically your villain. It's very obvious. It's not a... It's not a... It's not really a twist even in the movie. But... I like Aiden Quinn. He was also in Unknown with Liam Neeson. Um... As a villain, he's fine, but too often it feels like they're trying to have him play it over the top, and I don't think that's really Aiden's thing. From other films I've seen him in, he doesn't seem to do that too often. Um, Like Practical Magic, which again, not a movie that I remember fondly, but it didn't seem like he did that that much in that, or other things I've seen him in, but yeah. This is a film that's just very unspecial. It's... They brag in the behind the scenes about how there's so many, like, things that this film does. And it's like, oh, it's a fantastic action movie. I'll get to the action in a second. Uh, the story's really interesting. It could have been. Sorry for yawning. Um, It's just... There's not, there's nothing in this film that I haven't seen done before, really. Especially the kill off a character halfway through the movie type of thing. At least here, it's a little bit of a surprise when it's done. Um, because it happens at such a, kind of a random point of the movie. But, I keep adjusting. I don't know. I'm uncomfortable. Whatever. Um, but... The thing with this movie is that it it doesn't seem to commit to the premise because you go through this and it's like, oh, are they going to try to make it so Liam Neeson's character is morally gray? Not really. He, at at as many angles as he can, tries to tries not to kill people. And that can be kind of annoying in a, an action movie where your main character is refusing to do certain things in order to not kill people. I just want to bring up real quick, one of the producers of this is Paul Curry, who did this film, released by Magnet, 222. This film uses a lot of the same techniques used in this film with the CGI, with um, with green screen and like projections. Because there's bits in this film where you have 
a bunch of planes moving around and a, and towers on this like airfield. All of that is CGI, and it looked fantastic, and I didn't even think any different of it. I thought it was just stock footage. There's a bit in Grand Central Station where you have all these people walking around, and apparently those people are just comped in. You have a recreation of Grand Central Station that looks one-to-one -one correct, like 100% correct. And they filmed this film. I think I think this was done in Australia, but this is a really good sci-fi mystery film. Um, I do recommend it to pretty much anybody that's into that type of thing. In Blacklight, they use that mainly for the chase sequences, the car chases, which this film has an astronomically higher budget than. 222, I would be surprised if 222's budget was above 5 million, maybe 10 million. I don't believe that a lot of Australian um, films would be that high, that of that budget, because a lot of their stuff is a lot lower budget. Um, unless it's like an American Australian co production. But Blacklight had a $46 million budget. And some of the back projection doesn't look that great. And they're talking about now with this technology, we're able to do more than we ever have before without getting people sick during COVID. Now, this mainly feels like it's an excuse to, to not have to do the COVID protocol shit, which I'm not getting on them about that. The COVID protocol thing sounded like a fucking scam from the beginning where it's like, oh, you have to check every single actor every day that you're shooting in every single location. And I always found it fucking ridiculous. Um, I guess this f was filmed while they were still doing COVID protocol shit, even though this came out in 2022. I don't know why the fuck they were still doing COVID protocol shit unless this was fucking like shot back in 2020 but it doesn't look that great for the most part and it kind of takes me out of some of the action sequences even though there is some decent staging there's the best action sequence of the film is this garbage truck chase where um taylor's character is trying to get away from liam neeson's character driving after him in his car and he's got a garbage tr truck he's like taking this one car he's got the thing and it pull, pulls the car to the side so it's tumbling in front of Liam Neeson. He has to go out of the way. He's emptying the trash in front of him. And it's a very engaging action sequence. But some of the projection scene some of the projection bits to show, oh it's Liam Neeson in the car are very distracting. Um it distracts me on pretty much every Netflix show where they have the projection and one side of the projection is smooth like it should be and the other projection is like ch -ch 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 -ch, which I don't know how the fuck you fuck that up and don't see it when looking back at it and say, oh, maybe that doesn't look that good. But who knows? Um, the other action scenes are fine for the most part. There's a shootout near the end. The <sighs> It's mostly staged well. But there's weird editing things like J.J. Abrams fucking lens flares uh, whenever something intense happens or bits where they zoom in on the frame and it looks like a fucking like filming error. Where it's like T -t -t. it's like a cap cut thing. It's like what when in cap cut where you do like the or like TikTok videos where you see like the frame go like psh, psh, on a person, and it's supposed to be like, ooh, intense, look at that picture of that person. It's like that, and it it really got on my nerves, the editing of this film. Other action scenes, there's bits where Taylor John Smith is beating the shit out of some cops. There's one that's like, one bit that's done in one shot that looks pretty good. It's obvious that he can do some of the stunts. There's some bits where he's like sliding down a pole, um, or that sounded bad. But you know what I mean. Like a... There's a pole down the side of a, an apartment complex. And there's that. He's He clearly can do s some of the stunts. Um, 
And one thing I will give the film is that they do somewhat address Liam Neeson's age. They don't have him doing all the crazy shit that they try to in the Taken, in Taken 3, especially where they try to have him climb a fence. And I'm like, I don't buy him climbing a fucking fence, especially when they're doing it in 14 cuts. Um, at least here they have him kind of fall on his ass a couple times. And I'm like, OK, you're at least trying to make the character a bit more human. But the big issue with this film is that it doesn't stick the landing. The ending is fair. It feels like they wanted to shoot a bigger action scene between like Liam Neeson and Aiden Quinn, but they didn't. It's just like, I guess I'll do spoilers for this. There's a bit at the end where Aiden Quinn and him and Liam Neeson are in a car and he's like, you're going to go. You're going to go, um, spoilers, you're going to go live with this, um, with this thing about Project Unity where you're killing innocent civilians and it turns out Taylor John Smith was in love with the woman who gets killed in the beginning and that's why he was looking at her and everything, which not that big of a twist when you're looking at someone and repeating what they're saying while they're doing that. It's kind of like, oh, you have a thing for her? And basically, they both, like, he, it's really janky looking. It's weird. Aiden Quinn, like, gets out of the car, opens up his briefcase, grabs out a gun. Liam Neeson gets a gun, walks to the other side. Aiden Quinn starts shooting at him. He shoots Aiden Quinn in the shoulder and says, okay, um, you're going to go live about this. And I'm like, oh, what's next? Is he going to, like, do something else? Cut to him finding his daughter and granddaughter who entered witness protection without his... Like, they never explain this. They never explain why the daughter and granddaughter were in witness protection. They never do. Um, He never got the chance to tell her that she that he was dealing with the head of the FBI. And also... I'm guessing they're insinuating that Aiden Quinn put them in prote- in witness protection to get Travis to keep working for him, even though Travis knew that he was killing innocent civilians. But it's really not well shown. I don't want it explained to me, but when you do shit like that at random, it can be very confusing for your audience. But yeah, most of the issues with this film are just that it's... Nothing special, nothing is really that well developed. It's just not that amazing of a movie to watch. Uh the the conspiracy angle is very you know, worn out. If you're going to do a conspiracy angle like that and do something a bit more interesting with it, I'd suggest making your movie R. But then again, you probably wouldn't get a $46 million budget with that. Also, I don't know where the $46 million budget went. It feels like, other than the garbage truss, truck sequence, which is a genuinely pretty fun action scene, and the bits where Taylor John Smith gets to beat people up, all of the best action scenes have him in them. Maybe he should be the action star. He's not exactly like that gruff looking. He's kind of more pretty boy looking, as you've seen in Where the Crawdads Sing. But yeah, like, I enjoyed his scenes, and Liam Neeson's kind of just there. It would Maybe it would have been more interesting if it turned out Liam Neeson was killing innocent people. Or he was sent to extract bad guys who were actually doing bad things, and that's why their covers got blown. Like, that would make it a bit more interesting. But no, you have the same thing of, oh, he's a fixer, but he's not... There, there's really nothing stand out about this character, like, at all. So, I can kind of understand a lot of people not being into this film. I don't think it's terrible, but because it, it does legitimately have some decent production value. And again, most of the actors are pretty alright. But, yeah, it's, I can understand a lot of people not being into this. But, yeah, um, that was my review of Blacklight. If you've seen the film, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. If you have any recommendations, put those down there as well. And uh, 
move over here next door.